Why does Jesus call himself the bread of life? Why is bread mentioned over 400 times in the Bible? What is so significant about bread? Bread, or lechem, is made up of three letters, lamed, ket, and mem. The three letters are rich in symbolism, and an understanding of the letters help us to gain better insight into the word bread. First letter is lamed. The symbol for lamed is the shepherd's staff. The shepherd's staff was used as a tool to lead the flock and direct the flock. In the Old Testament, we see King David calling his Lord a shepherd in the famous Psalm 23, which starts out, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The first shepherd in the Bible is Abel, who was killed by his brother Cain over jealousy. God favored Abel's sacrifice over Cain's. Abel brought forth the best of his flock for a sacrifice, while Cain brought forth some of his crop. What is the lesson here? Does God like animal sacrifices over plant-based sacrifices? No. God is after the heart behind the sacrifice. He wants you to know He is all you need. He is the Lord, your shepherd. You shall not want. As it says here in Psalm 23, 1-6, He leadeth me behind, beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. His staff will comfort me. The Lamed is the center of our Hebrew alphabet, similar to the way we have time before Christ and AD, which I thought was after death, but it actually is Latin Anno Domini in the year of our Lord. God recognized that his people needed a shepherd because the shepherds or teachers were failing the people of Israel. He uses this rich metaphor to say, you aren't taking care of the sick, the injured, the lost, and with force and harshness you have ruled them. Due to this, the sheep have scattered. In Matthew, we see Jesus as the shepherd. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. And in John, Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. This brings us to our next letter, Chet. Chet is the eighth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and it is where we get our letter H, as well as the number 8. The number 8 represents new beginnings, which makes sense when you understand the picture behind the letter Chet. The picture behind the letter Ket is that of a tent wall or of separation, which forms the basis of the gate or doorway, which is what the modern Hebrew letter looks like. In Genesis, when Adam and Eve were cast out of the Garden of Eden, they were cast out to the east. East and west are very symbolic in the Bible as moving, as moving further from God or closer to God. It is why we see the tabernacle facing toward the east in the desert. So to walk into the Holy of Holies, one must travel west. I find it fascinating the flow of worship depicted here to follow the same manner as to how we draw closer to God. It is through Jesus that we have a sacrifice. If you repent of your sins, he is just to forgive. And we worship him out of reverence and thanksgiving. And by doing so, we have access to the Holy of Holies, the Ark of the Covenant. And what's in the Ark of the Covenant? The bread of life, the Omer of manna. Jesus fulfilled prophecy by riding into Jerusalem on a donkey. But what gate did Jesus enter in? It was the Eastern Gate, the Gate of Mercy, or what's now called the golden gate. Jesus enters into Jerusalem and becomes our sacrifice. He becomes the gate of mercy, our golden gate. Chet is a beautiful reminder that Jesus stands at the door and knocks, 
and anyone who hears his voice and answers the door and invites him in will encounter the living God. This brings us to our final letter, Mem. Mem is the 13th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It has the numerical value of 40. It is where we have our modern letter M and carries the meaning of water or Mashiach or Messiah. The letter Mem has two forms, a closed form and an open form. These two forms represent the revealed and concealed truth of God demonstrated by the Mashiach, the revealer of mysteries. Additionally, the Mem represents the womb, Rechem, is the basis of mother, Ima. It is interesting that there are 40 weeks of gestation before you give birth, or your water breaks. Other examples of 40 being found in scripture and tied to Mem are 40 days of the flood, 40 years wandering the desert, 40 days Jesus fasted without bread or water. The Torah the most vital element in our spiritual lives is referred to as water. No matter what you try to replace with the word, it's not going to satisfy your thirst. This is clearly articulated in Jeremiah where it is written, Be appalled, O heavens, at this. Be shocked, be utterly desolate, declares the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, hewed out cisterns for themselves, broken cisterns that can hold no water. In the book of John, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Jesus, showing his compassion, inviting everyone, everyone who is thirsty, Everyone who is thirsting for truth, come, come to the well of living water and meet your king, who extends to you the gift of himself. When Jesus died on the cross and they pierced his side, fulfilling Old Testament prophecy, by the way, blood and water came out. Some point to this as the birth of the church. Just like Adam, Jesus' bride is birthed from his side. Now that we have opened up the mem, the hidden truth, let's put the letters together. The shepherd's teaching is the gate, the hidden mystery of the Mashiach, the Messiah, the living water, which is the bread of life. It was foretold in Micah that out of Bethlehem shall come forth the ruler of Israel. Bethlehem is made up of two Hebrew words, bet meaning house, and lechem, meaning bread, or in Arabic, Beit Lam, which is house of meat. It's interesting that the place Jesus was to be born would tie back to wheat and meat. God is teaching us through his word. He is after your heart. When Jesus was born, shepherds came to witness the birth. Jesus laid in a mangia, or manger, a feeding trough, probably still smelling of grain. The infinity symbol eight laid on its side. Jesus is the infinite solution to an infinite separation from God. Jesus is the gate. Jesus is the shepherd. Jesus is the source of living water. Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is the bread which has come down. Here we have the famous passage of John 22 through 59. Here Jesus has just fed the 5,000 with two loaves of bread and five fish, with 12 baskets left over, by the way. These people were coming to Jesus looking for a sign, not recognizing that Jesus is the sign. If you would only do this, then I'll believe. If you do this for me, then I'll do that for you. That's not love. That's transactional. God is saying, recognize what I've already done for you and let me be enough. I want your heart. This leads me to my final picture of bread and that is the three matzah stacked on the table at Passover. 
The middle matzah is broken in two and represents suffering. During the dinner of Passover, the leader will break the matzah in two and take a piece of the matzah and hide it in a wrapped cloth. And after the dinner, the youngest will go and find the matzah and bring it back to the table and exchange it for a prize and share the matzah with the rest of the people at the dinner table. This is done at every Jewish home during Passover. During the Last Supper in Mark 20, 14, 22, we see Jesus right after being betrayed by one of his closest to him, breaking bread, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Take and eat of it. Do this in remembrance of me. And after resurrecting from the grave, he appeared to his disciples, and in breaking the bread, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And they said, Were not our hearts burning within us when he opened the scriptures to us? Thanks for viewing the video. I hope you learned something new. I'd love to get your feedback, so leave a comment below on what information you found to be most interesting. Also, if you have questions or suggestions for future content, I'd love to hear that as well.